Hello, and thank you for listening to this talk. My name is Ryan Brummett, and today I'm going to be talking to you about WARP, on-the-fly program synthesis for agile, real-time, and reliable wireless networks. With the emergence of Industry 4.0, the performance requirements of wireless networks used in industrial applications have steadily increased. Wireless networks were first successfully used in process control industries where sensors and actuators operate at low data rates and have mostly fixed workloads. The next frontier for wireless control is advanced manufacturing applications such as reconfigurable manufacturing or automated warehouses. These new applications are significantly more demanding with sophisticated devices such as cameras and microphones that generate large amounts of data data that must be delivered reliably with very low latency to maintain control stability. Moreover, these applications can be highly dynamic, requiring frequent network reconfiguration. Traditionally, the workload of an industrial application is specified as a set of multi-hop and periodic flows. A periodic flow releases a new packet at a known and fixed rate. A centralized controller uses the workload specification to construct a schedule that determines when each node transmits or receives. These schedules are disseminated to all nodes which execute them in a synchronous manner. Due to the critical nature of the applications these networks support, packets released by flows must be delivered to their destination with a high degree of probability, usually 99% or higher. Moreover, packets must be delivered within deadlines that range from seconds to milliseconds. In years past, satisfying these requirements would meet the needs of most applications. However, with the increasing sophistication of sensors used in industry, such as the inclusion of cameras and microphones, it is essential that wireless networks are able to support increasingly higher data rates. Supporting higher data rates without losing reliability or real-time performance, though, is particularly challenging for industrial wireless networks due to network dynamics. Network dynamics typically come in two forms, short-term and long-term. Short-term dynamics include variations in link quality over time. Industrial environments are particularly prone to large variations in link quality due to their dynamic nature. The primary mechanism available to wireless networks to mitigate unpredictable short-term network dynamics is retransmissions. However, allocating too many retransmissions may greatly degrade network capacity. It is therefore essential that retransmissions are used efficiently. Long-term dynamics include node failures and workload changes, and are usually handled by network-wide reconfiguration. Since the applications we consider in this work may require frequent workload changes, a significant burden will be placed on the control plane. State-of-the-art techniques that have been developed to address these issues revolve around time-slotted channel hopping, or TSCH. A TSCH schedule specifies the time slot and channel for each transmission. An example TSCH schedule can be seen on the right where columns indicate slots and rows indicate channels. Short-term dynamics are handled by scheduling a series of fixed retransmissions for all release packets as circled in red. Long-term dynamics are handled by disseminating either an entire or partial new schedule. An important point that we wish to emphasize is the expressive power of TSCH schedules. The actions that nodes can take are limited to transmitting a specific packet, receiving a specific packet, or sleeping. This design choice is made to simplify the analysis of the real-time and reliability performance provided by the network. However, as we will see, this is unnecessary and comes with a significant performance penalty. To address these issues, we will approach the issue of specifying network behavior from a different perspective. Specifically, instead of specifying behavior as schedules, we will specify behavior as programs. Our approach differs from ongoing work on software-defined networks in that the programs we synthesize must meet both deadline and reliability constraints. If we consider general purpose programs, their expressive power comes from their ability to maintain state and to query and modify that state. 
These features are not present in schedules. Schedules do not maintain state and do not have conditional statements. A more flexible data plane could be specified using a general purpose language. However, the downside of general programs is that their behavior is significantly harder to analyze. Therefore, we seek to identify a domain-specific language that provides expressive power sufficient to allow flexible data plane behavior, but remains simple enough to analyze in an automated manner. Our first contribution is a new domain-specific language to specify the behavior of a network's data plane. As you may immediately notice in the example on the right, the DSL includes conditional statements which are key to its expressiveness. In each slot, each node is assigned a single program fragment consisting of flow management instructions, transmission instructions, and conditional instructions. Flow management instructions include instructions such as release and drop that are used to specify packet release and drop times. Transmission instructions include instructions to transmit and receive data, either by transmitting a packet and waiting for an acknowledgement, or by transmitting a request for a packet and waiting for it to be sent. Conditional instructions are instructions used to tailor the behavior of devices to their runtime states by giving them a set of actions to take. While it should be immediately clear that programs are more expressive, they must also be easy to analyze in the presence of lossy links. Let's take a closer look at the program fragments of one of the nodes from our example. At the top of the slide is the program fragments used by node B, and on the bottom of the slide, node B's possible states. The state is whether the packets for the two flows have been successfully delivered or not. Red squares indicate that the given flow's packet has not been delivered while green indicates that it has. The transitions between states reflect the possible actions that node B may take given a particular slot's program fragment. For example, in slot 0, node B will transmit a request for F0's packet, which was represented by the pull instruction. In this slot, there are no conditionals because in all reachable states, F0's packet has not been delivered. After executing the program fragment, node B will be in one of two states. Node B will either have or not have F0's packet. The program fragment in slot 1 reflects this. In this program fragment, node B will request F0's packet if it does not have it, otherwise it will transmit F1's packet. This behavior is in stark contrast to the behavior of schedules, which are unable to adjust runtime behavior in response to the network state. This highlights Warp's ability to share a slot across multiple flows, which, as we will see soon, will result in significant performance improvements. The intuition behind analyzing Warp programs is that we can construct a tree that captures all possible execution paths of the program as seen on the bottom of this slide. This allows us to measure the worst case latency and derive an analytical end-to-end -end reliability for each packet by analyzing reachable states. The key to our synthesis techniques is that they ensure that only a small number of states may be reached, allowing analysis to scale to large programs and networks. Let's recap. Warp programs are more expressive than schedules and remain easy to analyze. The open question is whether this additional expressive power translates to performance improvements. To answer this question, we provide simulations for a real topology with 85 nodes and a 6-hop diameter. Workloads were created by randomly selecting 50 flows, each with one of three possible periods. Each flow was configured to ensure an end-to-end -end reliability of 99%. Experiments were repeated 100 times with different flow sets in three different scenarios. In the collection scenario, flow sources were selected randomly with destination set to the base station. In the dissemination scenario, the base station was the source of all flows and destinations were selected randomly. The mix scenario includes both collection and dissemination flows. For baselines, we use CLF, React, and Recorp. CLF and React 
Our scheduling approaches in ReCorp is our own prior work on policy-based scheduling that has some similarities to WARP. However, ReCorp does not use programs and relies on a computationally expensive ILP solver. We measure the real-time throughput supported by each protocol. On the y-axis is the real-time throughput and on the x-axis the workload scenario. The scheduling approaches, circled in red, significantly underperform the policy and program-based approaches, circled in blue. Specifically, WARP, given as the green box plot within the blue circles, nearly doubled the performance of CLLF and REACT. WARP also provided much higher throughput than ReCorp, though the difference wasn't quite as high as it was for the scheduling approaches. Overall, the trend is clear. WARP greatly improves real-time throughput across typical IIoT workloads. WARP also includes an agile control plane that outperforms the state-of-the-art. The key idea is to shift the burden of program synthesis to network devices instead of performing the synthesis centrally on the network manager. Accordingly, WARP's network manager disseminates the workload information. Each node then constructs the program fragment they are to execute at the beginning of each slot. The advantage of this approach is that when the workload changes, rather than disseminating complete programs, which tend to be large, WARP only needs to disseminate the changes to the workload, which can be efficiently encoded. To evaluate the performance of the control plane, we have implemented WARP on both Telos B modes and DecaWave DWM1001 devices. Telos B uses the 802.15.4 physical layer while the DecaWave devices use the new ultra-wideband physical layer for 802.15.4. In this talk, we present only results from the DecaWave devices. Experiments were ran on a 16-node testbed. Schedules and programs were initially constructed using 30 flows under the NIC scenario. We first measured the amount of data required to add new flows to this workload as seen on the graph on the left. TSCH schedules must disseminate all changes to the existing schedule. This can be very time consuming due to the number of bytes that must be sent. In contrast, WARP disseminates only new flows or flows to be removed, which requires only a few bytes per flow. For example, in our implementation, only 9 bytes were needed to add each new flow. As a result, 35 new flows can be disseminated by WARP using only 315 bytes, while scheduling approaches such as CLLF and REACT require as much as 4,000 or 2,000 bytes, respectively. Next, we ran the schedules and programs constructed for the 30 flows. 56 seconds into the experiment, 10 new flows were added. We then measured the amount of time needed for all devices to reach consensus on the new workload. The results of this experiment are given on the right. As expected, the lower number of bytes required to be disseminated results in a shorter convergence time. Notably, each protocol drops in reliability by a different amount when the new flows are initially added. This is due to the frequency at which we sampled the packet delivery rate. Warp and React both drop less than CLF because both protocols were able to partially update the devices in the network before the next sampling point after the new flows were added. Overall, CLLF and REACT both took between 1 and 2 minutes to adapt to the change in workload, while WARP took only 16 seconds. This is a significant improvement and demonstrates the performance benefits of disseminating flows and synthesizing on the actual embedded devices. In conclusion, we have developed WARP a first attempt to use software synthesis on embedded devices for industrial wireless networks. WARP includes three core ideas. First, the behavior of the data plane can be specified using an expressive, domain-specific language. Second, synthesis and analysis techniques can work in conjunction to build programs that meet deadline and reliability constraints. Finally, a more agile control plane can be achieved by disseminating only workload changes and having no synthesized programs on the fly. Our experiments show that WARP has superior performance. It improves real-time throughput by as much as 2.6 times and quickly adapts to workload and topology changes. Looking forward, we plan to continue to probe the possible benefits of software synthesis for these types of networks. We would also like to encourage the community to do the same, as we believe the benefits of this first attempt 
suggests a wide range of future possibilities. Thank you for listening.